Welcome back. After working a 40-hour week, you got to unwind, right? And what's the point of a weekend if you can't blow off some steam and get a little wild? I'm totally with you. And here's one great way to do it. The stretch of Sunset Boulevard that will forever be known as The Strip originally cemented its reputation as the wild heart of Hollywood through a legal loophole. Because it technically lies outside L.A. city limits, the LAPD's strict moral code didn't apply. And in the 1920s, the freewheeling strip naturally attracted movie star debauchery of the highest order. In the 60s and 70s, the counterculture ruled the strip. The Doors were the house band at the Whiskey-A-Go-Go, and Led Zeppelin, bless their hearts, had their first area gig there. You know, there's nothing like it. It's, it's what rock and roll is. People coming here to want to see music, want to live the lifestyle, Sunset Strip. Sean Healy Presents has been booking bands on the Strip since 1996. There's a certain sort of energy that comes from the local bands in Hollywood that get a chance to play venues like the Roxy or the Whiskey or the Key Club or the Troubadour. Um, it's exciting for them. They know the history of the venue. They know the Guns N' Roses. They know the Motley Crews. And every day people get off buses and come here chasing dreams, and that's really what it's about. The Troubadour lies just off the Strip, but is central to its legend. The Troubadour is one of the oldest rock clubs in Los Angeles. Elton John played his first American show here at this venue in 1970. And who introduced him that night? Neil Diamond. Neil Diamond. What makes the Troubadour a special spot for most of the local bands that get the, the opportunity to even play here is that it still maintains its old school charm. It still looks exactly like what it looked like in the 70s and the 80s when Guns N' Roses and Motley Crue played here. Metallica. And in fact, Guns N' Roses played their first show ever at the Troubadour. Uh, one of the other things that people don't know too much about the Troubadour's history is that Roxy owner Lou Adler discovered Cheech and Chong here one night on a Monday night many, many moons ago, and he decided to put them on the road. Uh, one thing that's also great about it, it's got three bars and it's only a 500 capper. <laughs> and it's an all-ages club, which has been grandfathered in, and so kids of all ages can come see rock bands here. The Roxy has rocked the strip since 1973. Original owner Lou Adler passed the ownership of the club to his son Nick 10 years ago. The Roxy Place in music history is really a launch pad platform for bands. In my generation, a System of a Down or Incubus to Bob Marley playing his first show here. The Rocky Horror Picture Show was uh, actually first staged here. You know, plenty of bands have gotten their start here. See those bands go from guys pulling up in their van, playing for 30 people, to playing in Verizon Wireless Center. So to watch that climb uh, is always my favorite. More recent additions to the Strip include the Viper Room, co-owned initially by Johnny Depp. Also representing the newer generation of clubs is the Southern-styled House of Blues, with its famed Sunday Gospel Brunch. And then there's the positively jumping Key Club, a baby on the Strip having gone up only a decade ago. One of the things that makes this room, the Key Club, so special and differentiates it from the other venues is it's got that club-like atmosphere. It's got the lights, it's got the dance floor, it's got the VIP room, it's got the plush lounge, it's got couches, it's got bottle service, it's got VIP. And that's what makes this club different from your rock and roll venues like the Roxy or the Troubadour or the Whiskey and everything else that we've seen tonight. Yeah, let's go check it out. I'm in. It's a party atmosphere every night here at the Key Club. This was formerly Gazzari's in the 70s, but since 1996, it's been the Key Club, and every night's a party here. Tonight at the Key Club, it's hip-hop all night long. The genre may have changed from rock to rap, but the excitement for live music on the Sunset Strip remains a constant. It's lodged close to the heart of Western pop culture. Well, rock and roll is, is, is always right there. It's always going to be there. There's always a guitar and a drum and a bass and someone want to rock out. It's universal. It's worldwide. So you have tourists walking up and down the Strip from Europe, from Asia, from Russia, from all over the world. People know about the Sunset Strip and they know about the Roxy, they know about the Whiskey, they know about the Rainbow, they know about the Key Club. 
They know about all these places. So there's a certain sort of energy every night, especially on the weekends, that evolves from being on the Sunset Strip. Let's see, fast cars, stunt planes, gorgeous women. I'd say we have the makings for a pretty wild weekend. I would say so, and we hope we gave you some ideas on how to have your own wild weekend. Remember, you may have slaved through a 40-hour work week, but once Friday night hits, you have 48 hours to live it up, so make sure you do it right. Now, for more ideas on how to have a wild weekend, be sure to check out men7.tv. We'll see you next time on the Men 7 Show. On the next Men 7 Show, we're giving you the VIP treatment with seven ways